Welcome all to Open Minds, Open Mic, the place to be on our Friday night. And tonight, we have a delight for you. Of course, with our Open Minds, Open Mic shenanigans, all the fun you expect from all of our creatives. Also, we are here to celebrate uh, one Erica Floyd, who will be hammering down a feature for us to really marinate in the creative juices it's going to be a fun time, but in order to get there, we're going to just quickly remind y'all, no hate speech, um, keep it all about the love, don't be an asshole, or for all you guys who are familiar with the Iron Sheik, don't be a jabroni! Anyway, um, with that said, let's keep it all about the love and have fun, and this is what this is all about. And I posted the group chat, the uh, the list that we will have uh, will be changing as we go along. On deck, we have Generalissimo, but kicking things off, leading off at the one spot. Please give it up for Thomas Open Minds. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Good evening, y'all. I'm so glad you guys can't make it. Um, yeah, I'm going to start with just something that it was a quick free write that I did yesterday at the Come As You Are show that we host here in the room. Um, and it, it was obviously Halloween themed because yesterday was Halloween. And one of the prompts was like, right from like a character uh, from Nightmare Before Christmas, which is one of my favorite movies. And so I took a perspective of not necessarily a character, but kind of the vibe of a character. It's, it's still very much a work in progress, but I wanted to share that tonight. Um, it goes like this. This pumpkin patch is withered and half dead. Rot and gourds fill the air with a sour stench that lingers in my head. See, we were lords of spooky, creepy, and the grotesque. Now we just sit and rest, wasting away empty shadows of a day long gone but not forgotten in a garden that is overgrown my mind is blown i lost my crown somewhere in the crowd shouting out loud from a hilltop lost in a maze of change when will this pain stop i feel deranged it's safe to say I've been slayed out. I'm amazed by the way this game has played out. We lost a lot in the haze, but today, this day, I vow to reignite the pageantry of this celebration. I promise to bring the slimy, gooey bones to light this night. This particular night, this deliciously horrid night shall regain, I mean, shall reign again in full grime and delight. All Hallows Eve shall be a night of dreaded gloom, doom, and assorted dead things too. A time for splendorous gore and horrifying lore, I promise to you. Heads will roll across the floor once more. Oh. It is at this time that we unmute ourselves, show our love for Thomas Open Minds. Thank you, my dude. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Ah. Good stuff, man. And with that said, y'all, show is underway. On deck, we got Jackson Riley, but stepping up to the plate now, please give it up for Generalissimo. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Is it okay to do two pieces or just one? Two, two is okay. Two. Great. Cool. Okay. The first is called In Utero Felony. I was born a twin. My twin was born still. 
Like most when we were preemies, I was the size of a small delicata squash. My brother was more like a malnourished mini papaya. A fetus can't make a decision, but I did. I decided to not share. I decided to deprive my brother of nutrition and attention. When mom put her hands on her belly, I put mine on his face and pushed him away so he wouldn't feel the warmth of her hands or her pulse traveling through her fingers. When dad tried to talk to us through mom's belly, I put my brother in a leg formation headlock with my calves covering his ears. When dad sang, I squoze tighter. On my own, I made this decision. My two older brothers were unable to counsel me. My parents had no idea there were two of us. I stole a son from my parents. I stole a brother from my brothers. I stole a best friend from myself. I never got the chance to feel his pain when he stubbed his toe miles away from me. We never stood together against mom to proclaim we would never dress alike again. We never secretly traded dates before a sock hop. We would have been identical, but we never looked alike. That was my fault. My brothers know nothing about this. My father died before I found out. My mother has yet to tell me. I figured it out all by myself. And um, next piece is really old. It was, I think it was written in 1995 when I was living in New York City. So it's called Jezebel or Beware Women in Blue Dresses. I was out walking late one night, and from the fog behind an old street light appeared a pretty, sexy lady in a modest blue dress. She walked up to me and said, what's your name, man? I told her a lie. My name is Dan. Well, Dan, here's the plan. On this night, I'm in need of a man. Then she said as she looked me straight in the eye, Dan, would you be my supply? I looked her up, and I looked her down and asked myself a question quite profound. Is she just a lonely lady? Or is she the devil's sister? Tick tock goes the clock. I need your answer now, mister. I gave my answer in a moment of duress. I smiled at her and said, yes. We went to her place. It was stifling and hot. In less than a minute, she was totally undressed. Come on, Dan, don't be shy. Take off your clothes, lie on the bed. I'll do all the work. I promise you the night of your life. She was unbelievable. She was outrageous. What happened in that bed left me in a state. And when I woke the next morning, it was quite late. In the paper on the front page was a picture of a man who either died during sex or died in his sleep. When I looked again, what I did see was a photo of a man who looked just like me. Down a little and to the left was my lady in her modest blue dress, under which a caption read, Unidentified man found in her bed. A cop on the scene asked her, Miss, I need your name. I have no time to play games, officer, mister. My brother's name is Lucifer. My name is Jezebel. I am the devil's sister. She said these words as she sat in an ancient red velvet chair. Then the building shook. There was a flash of smoke. And she and that chair disappeared into thin air. Thank you. Everybody at this time, please give it up for... Generalissimo at this time. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I yeah. love that. That was a heavy hitting second piece there. That first piece too. Oof. I like the range that you just I like that just trip you just gave us there. Um, thank you so much for um your writing and for what you do. Thank you again, Generalissimo. Ooh. Wow, we're off to a good start, everybody. I'm excited. Um, with that said, we're going to keep this rolling on deck. We got Angel Kim, but at this time, stepping up at the three slots, give it up for Jackson Riley. Unmute and take it away. You are ready. Mm. Okay. I, uh, this is a piece I wrote last night, uh, not at Come As You Are. It was actually immediately after. Um, this is one of uh, two poems I've written uh, to my little brother um, with whom I'm not really in contact anymore. Uh, and so let me find the newest version. All right. 
Today, I woke up in a shoebox. The shoe fit, so the door locks. No pockmarked clocks adorn my walls. Instead, I opt for steady rock and roll. A pole. Do you hold love for me at all? It's ready fall, and I'm not grateful. So next holiday is Christmas, a whole December without my missus sending hugs and loads of kisses. If I sent this, you'd label me faggot. We'd laugh and get caught up on business. Baby brother, how I miss you. I'm sorry that I misused your care for me unfairly when I used you as my therapist, but I've already said this. I doubt that you'll read it a second time with fresh eyes. I doubt it matters if I rhyme or don't. I'm losing faith that you'll respond. Until next, I send a drunken text expressing my profound regret. I love you, and I hope you're well. Poem. Everybody, at this time, please give it up for Jackson Riley. Yeah. Uh, Jackson. Ooh. Yes. Ooh, I felt that one. Mm. And again, this is one of the reasons why we write. And just a reminder here, everybody, uh, Jackson, one of our uh, beloved members of our community, co-host of Come As You Are, another open mic here that we have um, in the Zoomverse every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in this very Zoom room. Um, check it out if you are able to do so. Comes with a writing prompt and a mental health check-in. It's a pretty dope show. So with that said, check it out. Support Jackson, support what we do here. Um, one more time, get it for Jackson Riley. Jackson. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And with that said, we're going to keep this ball rolling. It's it's rolling pretty fine. On deck, we got China Bloodmire. Let's step into the plate now. Please give it up for Angel Kim. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Um, let's see what we're going to do here. Yeah. I'm going to give you this one. Magic is for kids. Take me back to tapes spinning, double dutch and breeze when streets hung Motown, moving to our own ease. Before world's weight started pressing down heavy dragon, when Kool-Aid smiles and freeze pops made days feel blessed. Take me back when mama's voice ruled with no need to stall and corner store candy. Well, that's all we saw. Magic didn't live in wands, it danced in summer's air. In block parties where DJ spun beats felt everywhere. We spun in circles, moonwalking on cracked pavements, while uncle's old vinyls brought back soulful statements. The revolution won't be televised with fists in the air and people everywhere seemed to really care. Magic was in the break beats and boombox tones, unity felt at barbershops and inside our homes. No Wi-Fi, just real connections face to face, bike tires spinning fast, racing past rat race. Magic lived in heat of July's long days in click clack of dominoes and spades we played. It's the boom of bass and glow of street lights, the joy and simplicity on those carefree nights. We grew up quick and innocence slipped as the world taught us fast how reality dripped. Magic's for kids, I guess that's what they say. But take me back to those simpler days where love and laughter didn't come with a fee and the magic from the hood, well, that's all we really needed. Now heads stay down, locked to screens. We've traded those playgrounds for digital dreams. And beyond the screen, our struggles run deep from violence in our streets to justice we seek. Red lines still divide and systems still fail. Dreams deferred by the weight of mass jails. Our history's rich, but the fight ain't done. We face battles daily that can't be our run. Through chaos, through chaos, we search for a way to hold onto joy as it slips away. 
Living the good life comes with a cost in a world where old school magic has somehow gotten lost. So take me back to the simpler days where magic was just for us. Let's go. I got a similar piece like that, but I'm not reading it tonight. That's crazy. Everybody, like please give it up for Angel Kim at this time. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hey, okay. Beautiful. Oh, man. Erica, that just means great minds think alike. Definitely. And I appreciate that. When I get up the nerve, I told you I want to collab with you at some point. Don't know what. I want to hear that. I, I want to hear yes, that. Please. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Please, please do. See. Yeah. Your voice is together on a piece. Mm -hmm. All right. You got me there. We might break the world. I'm excited. With that. <laughs> and we're we're excited. You know, we're excited about that. We're excited about Erica Floyd, who's on deck mind you. So we're going to keep that seat warm for her because coming up next, we got the founder of Go For Blood. Everybody at this time, please get up for China Blood Mine. Hell yeah. Give it away. Uh, Y'all always make me nervous right before. Oh, God. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, good evening, everyone. Hi. I am fulfilling a request this evening. <laughs> so I apologize for how nasty I'm about to be. Um, <laughs> this piece is called Fantasy Wish List. I guess it, it makes sense. We got to start putting in letters to Santa soon or right now, right? <clears throat> Dear Santa, all I want for Christmas is two. Yeah, I want two chicks. One, because I was nice, but I like naughty shit. So here go my wish list. Nah, I can't make this quick. This some real detailed shit. Come here, let me whisper it. Picture this, a seasonal kiss. I want two sets of two lips. Two women that's real thick. Make sure they no tricks. Xbox, let me hold the stick. A night where the dick is unlimited, pushing the limits and <laughs> just allow me to paint the scene. Two black queens, Donder and purple and green. With activated dopamine, meatier than protein. Biggest booties I ever seen. <laughs> Calves like they track fiends. Skin like them near Moxine. Cupid and Katniss Everdeen. Sniper position like a Marine. Ready to suck them both clean. Oxtail bone and bad lean. Cause I like to be dined, both drinkable like fine wine. Energies are intertwined, moving with both like we busting rhymes. I need them like Rudolph, the Wilma kind. Like the way this idea been running on my mind. Santa, can you tell I've been taking my time? I need them real shapely, in panties that say spank me. Gatsby as I handle them greatly, the neighbors finna hate me cause I swear I'm a gatekeep. Cause I got them dungeon dragons, plenty in arsenal to handle them wagons. Santa, just imagine, night filled with bus and backs in. This, the way this tongue be lasting, I be speaking that dead Latin. Sand skirt smoother than satin, silkier than jasmine and Aladdin. With that knee, Disney plus the strap, after tonight, ain't no coming back. From the way we be morphing and releasing endorphins, multiple O's for that oxytocin. Like Maui and Moana's ocean, we boasting while putting them pussies in motion. Santa, I've been good all year. Are you listening? I'm trying to fuck them both in this kitchen while getting this blitz in. I deserve two vixens. Give me that sweet life. Mm -hmm. That London tipped in. Two pussies that are soaked and glistening. Ready for pleasure. Hand me the ribbon and let me measure. Now they tethered. Mm. Presented together, making me wetter and wetter. And I promise next year I'll do better because everything is better with leather. Santa. I've been plotting and scheming. So while they tag teaming, I'ma get even like Steven. Back shots and heavy breathing, muffled moans and screaming. Edge Lord unleashing demons, Gordon as I'm serving heathens. They scratching as I deepen. Harriet in water, mm, release the semen. I mean the freeman, cause tis the season to roll up my sleeves in. See, I flipped that. <laughs> Santa, just rename me Prancer and give me two personal dances and let us flow like Kansas. Spitting this ancient banter, I'm a professional romancer. On Venus, two feet planted. Suddenly, I'm both handed. Hooked in Jumanji, implanted. Comet spreading, Queen's Gambit. Chest to chest, Bishop slanted. 
These hands are specially crafted to inspect her gadgets. Covers blown like Clayton's gasket. Cause pretty pussies deserve open caskets. Eating groceries, I'm a soul snatcher. Handle this pack like a backdoor dasher. Spreading them on a platter. Conversing like the Mad Hatter. We busting nuts and moves like Jagger. Crowns slipping while we humping. Pussy pillaging and plundering. I'm real Chris with my discovering. Watching them come undone again. So yeah, <laughs> I want two chicks. Santa is not new to this. And that's peace, y'all. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That sounds Yo, dumb. What? <laughs> oh, get it. Get Everybody, it. Oh. I'm mute. Give it up for the one and only. You got Santa China blushing. Wow. <laughs> you got Santa yeah. blushing with wow. that request. You got Ron both. Jeremy blushing. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Santa both blushing on both ends. I'm just saying. Mm. <laughs> I was just fulfilling the request, y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for off. for this. I requested that one. You're welcome. <laughs> but seriously, everybody, thank China for that one because she wrote that son of a bitch. Everybody, go for China Bloodmire one more time. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Friday night. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm blaming the both of y'all. Wow. So we're off to the races with this one, huh, tonight? <laughs> we just gone through uh, five poets here, and now it is feature time. So with that said, it is um, it is really it's it's truly a pleasure on behalf of Open Minds to be um presenting to you tonight's feature in the form of Erica Floyd. Um, I, I felt like it was just earlier this year I was first introduced to um, this wonderful poet, this wonderful voice, um, and with with such work that will will just, it, it will move you in ways. And with the presentation, um, I feel like my words can never do justice. So with that said, let the words from the woman herself do the work for us so without further ado it's my honor and privilege to bring forth to the virtual stage tonight's feature in erica floyd please take it away when you are ready i'm not ready after her i'm just not um <laughs> anyway you, let me you need a cold shower real quick <laughs> i don't even know man i don't even know but do me a favor since i am not um uh, savvy on multitasking when it comes to this i think wits hit me up and he wanted to know where we were at i think he meant me so if you can send wits um a plane just in case i he already was... sent it to him thank you you're thank welcome you. so yeah. i'll be with... if you want we could put another open mic in front of you uh to get no. him time to come in um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this because um, Dre knows um, I was nervous, so I just want to jump in and just get this over with. <laughs> so I'm gonna get this over with. Um, who am I? I am Erica, not Badu, not Campbell, not Alexander, just me. To quote Ari. I am not my hair. On second thought, maybe I am. Sometimes hiding myself, my hurts, my faults, my insecurities with camouflage, covering, attempting to appear that I am all put together and tamed in order to protect what lies beneath because what's underneath can be wild if not controlled with regularity. And this is done for a specific period of time until I decide that I am ready to release and breathe. And that's when I disrobe the disguise and become naked, shedding the armor, Lowering my guard that's no longer needed, at least for now. Exposing the real me and showing new growth. 
revealing evidence of the roots from my upbringing, my inner strength, from conditioning myself to my circumstances, the grace of all the storms I've persevered through and the colorful ways that I've tried to cover up my past hurts, finding and spreading joy to spite my reality. Because in essence, I can control my reactions with straightening my responses when I can't control what comes against me. Embracing a renewal of self by cleansing away all that have tried to destroy my joy, my character, aligning and anointing a more righteous path, preparing to rid myself of unhealthy entanglements as well as loose, brittle ends that could break me, leaving me damaged if I hold on too long, ultimately rewarding me with curvy spirals of peace in healthy restoration. No more pretense of relaxation in past, but with focus and positive purpose lined up evenly until I need my protective armor again. Next piece. He that has an ear, let him hear what is put out into the atmosphere. The average ear will hear what it wants to hear, not necessarily what is exposed to the air, but because it won't accept what is said out of fear, fear, a way of keeping you enslaved, at times resulting to victories being delayed, forgetting that the truth shall make you free, no longer a slave to delusions of grandeur, but rest assured, the truth always comes out for sure. He that has an ear, let him hear what is put out into the atmosphere. It makes you wonder why as humans that we would accept a lie before we accept what's real we would rather destroy, steal, or kill the truth than to know what the deal is at the expense of others weaving tales for the sake of humor, not caring that the stories were spun from a rumor. He that has an ear, let him hear what is put out into the atmosphere. I can't help but surmise that without the lies that the world could be a place that I could prize, where we can continue to live our lives in peace without the deceit, like paradise. Come to think of it, didn't it all begin, which was an induction to sin with Eve being deceived by the serpent with ease because of her, her wanting to believe the serpent's deception, his mission achieved. He that has an ear, let him hear what is put out into the atmosphere. Never ceases to amaze me how much a lie can grow due to not acknowledging what you already know to be true, which oftentimes the deceiver is you because you can't handle the truth, whether it's Holy Spirit, gut feeling, or sixth sense, you get a clue. But what you choose to do with that is up to you. He that has an ear, let him hear what is put out into the atmosphere. To illustrate how a deception can grow, wasn't it said that the inferior race was the Negro? Our inventions, our rights, and dignity they stole. But didn't our people come up with a code through spirituals to escape to freedom via the Underground Railroad? And wasn't this code right under the oppressor's nose? He that has an ear, let him hear 
what is put out into the atmosphere. Just so it is made clear, the oppressor will shoot their falsehoods like spears because they found us intimidating and a threat which didn't fall on deaf ears, which led to our oppression for many years. Wish we would have recognized it for what it was and possibly still is. He that has an ear, let him hear what is put out into the atmosphere. Current events with so many stories spun, seeking ratings for some and for others. The truth, the smoking gun, propaganda made public in its description of the enemy type. Since the author is number 45, please don't believe the hype. He that has an ear, let him hear what is put out into the atmosphere. It is my belief that the average ear will hear what it wants to hear, not necessarily what is exposed to the air, but because it won't accept what is said out of fear, and that's sincere. He that has an ear, let him hear what is put out into the atmosphere. Next piece. Intrigued by you. The mystique, what makes you so unique in comparison to past suitors? Must be on guard to not appear weak, yet cautious in my stupor so I consider drawing from childhood activity the simplicity of making time to play, to fill the void. Hence, my goal is to slay, proclaiming your secrets destroyed. Having you bear all, I must get to the bottom of this. Since why is the question as to your apparition Filling my head often. Solving for X is my mission. So school shall now begin. Touching on art, math, and anatomy, just to name a few. Considering my methods are elementary. To begin, there'll be no rules to stay within the lines. Yet I'll trace your physique from lips to hips to spine. Canvas worth mounting hieroglyphic in design. With your permission, if I'm so inclined to finger paint as I go, Nice and slow, phalanges, trailing patterns, high and low, eliciting tremors beneath my hands. Breathy moans that liken to school bands, just getting up my nerve to explore dips creases and curves, encountering paths of discovery. No bands to the derivative of your history. With each caress of your flesh, I'll solve yet another mystery, awarding me echoes of ecstasy, followed by pause. Just because I wanted to test the strength of your resolve. You've exceeded my expectations, unveiling all. 
So with a final kiss, I declare a recess before I render class dismissed. Next piece. The journey began as if traveling by rowboat, coasting without oars. Unbeknownst to me, I was called to a destiny without the luxury of free will. In other words, there was no option to request my existence. So here I am, chosen to complete a task that I believe I have yet to fulfill since up until now. I continue to greet the day with breath. It is my belief that I am not finished yet. So I tarry on in hopes that I bless those who encounter me in hopes that I do everything with sincerity in hopes that my mere existence can bring change for the better, in hopes that I've learned from past errors, in hopes that I remain humble in all that I achieve, in hopes that I have no regrets before I leave, in hopes that my children know beyond reasonable doubt that I did my very best in loving them, in hopes that it, those that encounter me see God in me, or at least a glimmer of him, in hopes that the foundation I planted in my seeds were firm, in hopes that I made a positive difference, in hopes that somehow I exude an aura of peace and not chaos, in hopes that I get a well done, thy good and faithful servant, because currently it appears that the mode of transportation has changed to a local mode of train, soon to transition to an airplane, one way, no baggage, leaving the way I came. Next piece is unrequited youth. Daily life is contemplated. What feats will I conquer in the present? What ways will I help heal those around me, including myself? How will I impart blessings onto those I encounter? How will I keep my sanity to not sink too deep into melancholy, but on the forefront of my thoughts is the shell that my soul inhabits. It betrays my inner fantasies routinely. And on this continuum, my mind battles in rebellion to this reality that my times around the sun cannot be denied Yet in my truth, I am in denial. It is not ready to accept knees that no longer endure the tenacity it once did. A jawline growing more flaccid. My frame lacking the capacity of the agility and flexibility it once had. Breath that no longer has the longevity of equal rhythm in movement. Metabolism that no longer metastasizes against caloric intake. Epidermis that is lagging in stamina, demonstrating its weakness by showing lines of dialogue like a switchboard, awaiting connection to the appropriate extension never ending, but static in reception since brain and body lack comprehension in communication, in essence, making one think it's able, yet finding flesh is no longer capable 
of performing in that manner. Mind over matter is a wrap. Perhaps I should be grateful for that conversation which con continues to play out. Grateful that as of yet there is no disconnection. There are always new topics to address. Whether at the corner of my eyes, the dimples on my thighs, the furrows on my forehead and neck, short-term memories and hindsight, I try to recollect the lifeline that refuses to stay behind because it has a mind of its own mode of travel through varicose streams, although quiet. It's determined to be seen. It's low key in its arrival, so it doesn't have to scream. It appears steadily in purple, blue, and green situations that were once palatable. I now have to digress from, although they were once appetizing, I can no longer digest them. As I mature, my filter is becoming less and less. So not only do I lack in time, I lack patience for any mess that may cause me distress. My goal is to acquire and maintain my peace, realizing of late, it may be the one thing I have control over before I am deceased. The next piece is don't bleach my red flags. You underestimate my covering. Unbeknownst to you, I pray often. Despite my past experiences, my faith is still strong. And what I ask for with steady regularity is discernment as well as wisdom. I am of a certain age, an age that demonstrates that I've lived, that I've been through some things, that I have no desire to repeat undesirable experiences, that I have no desire to make the same errors in judgment, that I have no desire to ignore the red flags that could have saved me so much heartache so much pain. Ignoring the flags is what I believe is the culprit of most of society's woes. When you know better, you do better. We are in fierce denial of intuitive warnings, our gut feelings. We're too concerned about what feels good in the present and not the consequences of our self-indulgences when we should be more proactive in self-preservation personally. I need to learn from my past and the role I played in those unfavorable incidents in order to avoid a repeat. So don't bleach my red flags. I need them waving big and loud like a James Brown black and proud lyric to protect me from myself. Next piece is if trees could speak. I think about the trees. I think about how they are used ironically as metaphors for family, how generations exist according to their roots how branches are considered extensions of the bloodline. I think about the literal purpose of them, which is to help us breathe, and how that conflicts with their history, a history which assisted in taking breath away from so many, a history that I'm sure even the trees, being a living thing, never fathom this use of them. I think about how they were an unwilling accessory to so many crimes, crimes against humanity. So sick that the sap 
has been overflowing continuously from generation to generation repeatedly. How they were repurposed as a tool for crucifixion, for those to hang and die by asphyxiation, forcefully destined as a prop in the demise of Christ while longingly awaiting their new role for revelation as the tree of life. How they were used to build ships that brought precious cargo to a strange land and later laden with strange fruit by the hands of evil man, like ornaments on a Christmas tree. Do you suppose the trees suffer from tree TSD? Could the trauma have been passed deep down to the roots of so many with no option of therapy, so overwrought in their misery that their times of torment were plenty? Possibly the urge to take their own lives in order to not be accomplices anymore. It's no surprise that some ended up petrified because of their participation before. Perhaps that is what causes some of them to shrivel up and die. No wondering why. I'm amazed at the resiliency that regardless of generational trauma that many overcome. Perhaps those are the stronger ones. They continue to bloom to fight the torment that must consume them with gloom. That they low key throw shade on their abusers during heinous acts, such as hangings and of course picnics that are packed as spectators are eager for the attacks for their amusement. But provided a blanket of cover over the abused and perhaps the leaves are recording these acts as the cell phones are currently, but with no way of exposing the proof. How they were transformed and later transcribed on in regards to inhumane laws. How their cousins were later intertwined as instruments of discipline and ironically used by the very descendants of whom died by them. How they're morphed into currency which the love of this is considered the root of all evil currently, how not enough of it could adversely cause the destruction of self. I think about the stories they could tell, the secrets they could share from those roots that have preceded them. If trees could speak. Next piece mulling over my memories. Melancholy moods mandated me motionless to meaningful memories, Mercil mercilessly mourning matriarchs in memoriam that have moved to their mansions many months ago, making me mindful of my mortality each morning, midday, and moon that materializes, never motionless, meticulous in its movement. Me, myself, mistakenly meandering minutes, aware that moments won't miraculously multiply, but will minus. Meanwhile, remembering, Marsh was my maiden moniker mulling over the misguided misstep in matrimony, the misery of miscarriages that were too many. Meditative murmurings to my Messiah motivated me to maintain my mental, ultimately mesmerized by the miraculous metamorphosis of motherhood, made the misery more meaningful, grateful, the mission was manifested, four minions worth millions to me, yet no more Mohicans moseying through my middle passage. Menstruation met its demise, and meanwhile, menopause is masterfully messing up my mojo.
Next, please. Sexiness is a state of mind. It would be a reflection of self-confidence flexing. My sexy is being about my adulting, having the wherewithal to take care of all concerning me, utilizing accoutrements available to maintain my free, discovering my possibilities within my reach when things seem bleak. My sexy is owning my misdemeanors and felonious errors while living, providing reparation when needed as well as the forgiving of self because the blame falls to no one else. My sexy is my unsolicited consideration to all within my range. And although some may think it strange, my love for people in general will never change. My sexy is acknowledging that I don't know everything. So I don't have any qualms about inquiring about any number of things. My sexy is by no means vain. On the contrary, it ensures that humility is maintained. My sexy is finally realizing that I don't need someone's validation. And this very realization is key. So my sexy is being free to be me. Next piece, the necessity of self-exploration. This route has been traveled a minute, but not as often as one suspects. The course never really born. On the contrary, many climates were encountered. In past, men all paused at the beauty beyond the earthy tones glow. Yet now menopause dictates climate control. From global warming to cool like snow. Since self-exploration is necessary to know one's death in order to show, in order to enlighten the one who is the chosen to settle here. As time passes, we find we have yet to scratch the surface of what motivates the spirit beyond the dust. The terrain tends to shape shift as time shifts, showing many bumps in the road, even encountering craters here and there, uneven trails with shrubs and thickets thriving in places out of their natural habitat, stubborn expanses of what appears to be uninhabitable wasteland, marks, stretched beyond one's boundaries, but marks the spot like X to remember battles that were victorious. Yet in its center is a cavernous hot spring to give warmth and comfort, to give relief to the considerate, healing to what aches when the environment is favorable, when it's giving, when it's pleasing to the eye. But when the weather is harsh and unbearable, unforgiving, showing no flexibility, the spring becomes as a well gone dry, no longer giving comfort, no longer giving warmth no longer giving grace, 
no longer giving access. It may allow you to travel past unscathed, but it will not forget your harshness. It will remember. It will learn from it and be better prepared for whatever season comes. Next piece, waxing nostalgic. You bazookered your way in, blowing through, expanding the pink, making space to put your chocolate in my peanut butter, having recess in my Reese's to jack in this box. In anticipation of the prize, like a quicker jack, simultaneously giving me the sensation of a cool breeze willing through my hair, making my body shiver as you peppermints padding between this New Yorker's two all beef patties in special sauce. Let us cheese pick cool on your senses, seeding this bun. Sometimes you feel like a nut as this mound's coconut opens up like a sunflower seed to present this buds for you. So have it your way, Black King. Lick my mist like licorice as I kiss the tips of your butter fingers, savoring them like Chico sticks in preparation for the fun dip. Not many licks does it take to get to your Tootsie Roll. Melts in your mouth as well as in my hand like M&M's, milky weighing you through my double stuff that is good and plenty for now or later. The next piece, I have to go off camera because I was having technical difficulties. And so I have to go into another part of my phone to read this piece. It is called Melanin Matters. Hello, and thank you for calling Melanin Matters. If you think you have reached this number in error, please check the number and try again. Otherwise, press star and you will be transferred to our directory. Beep. Press one for Stephen Biko. Press two for Sonia Massey. Press three for Tyree Nichols. Press four for Malcolm X. Press five for Ahmad Aubrey. Press six for Brianna Taylor. Press seven for Trayvon Martin. Press eight for Sandra Bland. Press nine for George Floyd. Press nine two four for Marcellus Williams. Press star pound for all school massacres. Beep. We are sorry, but the martyr you are trying to reach is no longer in service. Press zero to speak with Jesus on the main line so you can tell him what you want. Beep. Your estimated wait time is maybe two late minutes. Disclaimer, he may answer, but just know that only God's will will be done in your circumstance. Callers tend to have similar outcome, death on repeat, guaranteeing, hashtag fame, posthumously, making martyrdom a reality. Beep. We're sorry, but we are experiencing 
extremely high call volume at this time. If you would like to hold your place in line, press one and we will return your call as soon as possible. Thank you. I see the number you are calling from is H A S H T A G. If this is correct, press one. If not, press two to leave a different number. Beep. We're sorry, but all circuits are busy at this time. Please retry the number and call again. Thank you for calling Melanin Matters. Goodbye. And for my last piece, I will need Dre's assistance to do the screen share. Okay. I am on the case right now. Give me one moment. Okay. Okay. Say when. Go ahead. You can just... to the next phase of maturity as the leaves of trees change we change concealing ourselves less transparency since more layers are necessary but in contrast there's opportunity to get in closer proximity of one another since cooler weather, more snuggling together. Synchronized rhythms, beginnings. Of creating our own heat. Our movements, melodious, on repeat. Soon longer nights, shorter days coming our way. Lazing lavishly, linguistically, in our love language we favor. More private time we savor. Behind closed doors, undercover. Lower temperatures. Dictate we mull it over, mulled cider and pumpkin spice scents. Wafting throughout, real nice. Mood content, fireplace, fire pits, quality moments, cozy settings of time well spent. Appetites wet, comfort food to put us in a more mellow mood. Craving heavier meals to match the blanket of darkness that comes upon us with a quickness beckoning intimacy an early call to rest and that was come through november thank you for your time and thank you for those that came out and supported my feature i appreciate it At this time, please give it up for Erica Floyd 
at this time. Damn it. That was dope. Woo. Yeah. You Thank did your you thing, baby. So much for that, Erica. Thank you. Thank oh, that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. It actually dropped November, uh, November 11th, which was Veterans Day two years ago. So the anniversary is coming up. Nice. Thank you. Listen, your whole set was phenomenal. I absolutely loved each piece you did. <clears throat> and I hadn't heard you do, uh, um, what is it, the, the bleach from my red flags? That's actually a prompt I came up with that I gave to Black noise and he did it in his workshop so to hear oh. you write what you did to my prompt I was sitting over here cheese and I was like ah yes I loved it absolutely oh. loved it thank you you are welcome great set love thank you thanks for your support I appreciate it really I'm glad it's over with <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So really, <laughs> you are the only one in this room that is glad that it's over with. <laughs> we the all cool thing about all the, the cool thing about features like these with the time that people are given, just to give everybody a heads up, this is your first time watching an Open Minds feature. We try to give um, our features at least 30 minutes um, because I feel, you know, at least 30 minutes is a good time for um, for one to fully express themselves and fully showcase their goods because we uh -huh. believe in showcasing and you know, in order to give people that showcase, it's giving them that spotlight, giving that time to do their thing. Um, uh -huh. So a minimum of a half hour. And there were some poems there I have not um, heard from um, that, um, that hotline one. That wow. and uh, you can't really put a time on creativity. So when people, when we do, when we arrange features with people, they're like, "How long of a set do I have?" I'm like, "How long of a set do you feel you need? How long of a set do you feel you want to like fully express yourself and and let people see what you're doing, see what you're about, feel you?" So it's like, like how do you put creativity? You know, how do you put like a time on creativity in in someone's soul, right? So it's like. You know, when we do our features, it's like, yo, y'all do whatever. There ain't no time limits. Y'all get whatever time you want. We all here to see you tonight, you know? So, oh, man, that, that set was so beautiful. It was moving. Thank you. I wasn't sure how long I was. I was trying not to exceed too much past 30 minutes. I was really, I don't know what time I started or anything. So, forgive you me. could have went to the morning, and we all would have been fine with that. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't matter how but long. As long as we get to hear you, that's, Thanks. you know, that, that's the idea of having a spotlight. And with that said, if you have any links of anything you have going on, any promotions, publications, what have you, please share that in the group chat. And that goes for everybody here, not just the feature. This is the idea of um, establishing community, build each other up, and we'll see each other grow. And that's the idea of um, open minds here is... Um, building each other up and watching each other grow. Um, so with that said, um, thank you, Erica, for doing what you do. And um, that was such such an awesome feature. So smooth, as um, Escape Artist said there. It was such a smooth feature. Um, such a nice ride throughout. Um, thank before you. we... Oh, thank you. <laughs> You uh, brought you know, us the good. Yeah, thank you. I love the way Jackson's feature went. He was smooth as he was going poem after poem. And so I kind of uh, took a page out of his book trying to see how I can make it flow smoothly so it wouldn't seem awkward. So I, I owe a debt of thanks to Jackson. <laughs> that, Jackson. See, we're here to inspire creativity. Still here. Yeah. We're doing it. So, thank you, Jackson. Thank you. You got me blushing over here. That was a phenomenal set. Thank you so much. I love this community. I love y'all. Yeah, incredible Anna. set, Erica. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and thank you, you guys, for inviting me. Uh, to feature. I appreciate that. It really touched me.
you know, you, right on. you deserve the spotlight, and it was just such a wonderful feature, and I'm so glad that you uh, you came came through tonight to bless us with that. Before we get underway with the rest of tonight's action, I just want to uh, say a quick hello to um, um, to Betty and Geechee. Uh, I saw them come in during um, in the early part of the feature. I just wanted to formally say hello, and um, if you would like to be part of the open mic action, there's plenty of space for you. Uh, you're more than welcome to share. Um, I tentatively have you in the list, so if you would want to uh, perform just um let me know if you're not if not um let me know as well in the group chat but um i will be posting an updated list shortly but before i um post that i'll just go underway with um who's on deck on deck we got justine but step it up to the plate now please give it up for frog corpse Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Oh, how I've dreamt, I've dreamt, I've dreamt. How I wept, I wept, I wept. Counted the blades of grasses past in the month of wounded steps. I gleamed, I gleamed, I gleamed. I pressed, I pressed, I pressed. Breaking the verdant, fragrant greens on warmer days that I never missed. It pales, it pales, it pales. In the cold November gale. In the space that was never to be. On a path where the heart surrendered. O oh, hell of hells, my hell, dragging December shell, the pranging and banging where the conscience left hanging. Dear memories, I have kept jailed. Finally. Out of the shambles of a broken home, the eeriness dwelt in houseless holes, pursuing current thoughts to outer wards in a river of contemplation drenching denim floored. A collodial shell conceived of cells hidden in the eyes behind the smaller self. Recollections filed on archival shelves, stored in a vacant room of Hell's Hotel, the drumming hammer by an increasing timbre, pressing on the moment in a crowded manner, disheveled fragments, conceiving qualms, buried alive by Lemire and walls. It's hard to face someone you once loved knowing you are not in their heart. Tis better to be this thing felt without love, knowing that they had found one in their heart. It is better to know they once had love than to be the one that feels as lost on those yesterdays when pondering it is better to hold that love than loss. With those incorrigible debts that stripped with a breath. Moving in a sea where the memories left and I cannot think. As we are now our era's idiots and know-it-alls. Mad bastards and sycophants skin sliding into a gilded house sitter a viral dumpster crawler. I will be coming for your pen, for your titles. I will bundle all of your laurels into my throne and set it ablaze. 
for those who say they give it all they've got is really less than what it is. Everybody at this time, please give it up for Frog Corpse. And oh, oh. <laughs> yes. We love you, Frog. Good shit, man. Take notes if you want to know how to deliver things, you know, in a raw, poignant fashion. In fact, um, we do have an episode of the Slam Jam as uploaded on YouTube with some pretty dope advice from Frog Corpse for anyone who wants to uh, get some pointers. Um, it's on YouTube again, uh, Frog Corpse. He's the dude of the night. <laughs> well, dude of this particular moment here. Always a pleasure to have him here. Thank you, Frog, for doing what you do. But let's see here. On deck, we got Ty Black. But step into the plate now. Please get up for Justine. Unmute. Take it away when you are ready. This is In Shadows We Rise. In the cavernous depths where the echoes reside, a question lingers, a challenge implied. Do you feel in charge? The mass visage stares, with shadows that dance through the weight of despairs. You clad in armor, so proud and so bold, yet beneath all your might lies a story unsold. For power is fleeting, like whispers of air, and those who seek light oft forget to prepare. The city around you, both beautiful and vile, creeps through your windows with darkness and guile. It cradles the dreams of those lost in their plight. But remember this truth, without dark, there is no light. Each fortress you build on foundations of dread will crumble to dust when the courage you fled. Yet within every shadow where fear might reside, is strength yet untapped. Come take it with pride. Injustice grows thick like weeds in the lane, yet roots tangled deep can flourish from pain. A leader finds solace in choices profound. Only then can true power beneath blame be found. Do you sense my intent as I speak from my heart? The ties that you cling to are shadows apart. Of this grand masquerade, where facades intermingle, where hopes intertwine like a sink and tingle. You may claim your throne on a mountain of sorrow, but remind me again of what waits for tomorrow. For we are but players upon this great stage with losses and victories inked on each page. Embrace all the specters that swirl in our mists, the chaos unravels yet brings us such bliss. To see through the darkness as unveilings collide, from ashes arise to accomplish or bide. I watch as you falter beneath all your fears. Each moment that passes reveals hidden tears. But iron will bend, not break under strain. In unity's name, we shall rise once again. So listen once more when my voice drifts near. Do you feel in charge? Let it echo, sincere. Your heart holds the power if only you'd see without darkness illuminating what's free. Let go of denial, become who you're meant. Transform pain into purpose, that's how champions ascend. And with every inhale as dawn's warmth light rises, recall without dark's embrace, we lose half our lives. Um. Thank you so much, Justine. You don't share often but when you do it's fucking dope everybody give up for trusting at this time yeah yeah justine oh keep that pen ripping through the page baby burning shit up keep doing what you're doing legit with that said 
We're going to keep this shindig rolling. On deck, we got Midnight's about to step into the plate. Please give her Ty Black. But before we do, uh, Thomas, uh, do we uh, have something yeah, to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it's uh, Ty. It's your first time here, right? So that's a little thing we like to do. Everybody in the room knows what to do. Unmute yourselves. And please give a big open mind, open heart, open arms welcome to Ty Black. Let's go. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Welcome. Let's go. go. You. Welcome home. Welcome. Welcome. I appreciate the welcome. Thank you so very much. And I well appreciate it. Well received. Thank you so very much. Oh, okay. I thought it was the time to go. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't realized it yet, if you're still trying to figure it out, you are in the presence of greatness. I am Ty Black. I burn with black flames. I am the walking volcano, vice president and member of the Galaxy of Poets. And for the feature of the evening, I'll give her her favorite, the big man poem. If you haven't realized it yet, I walk in pretty big shoes. And if you walk beside me, you might even feel the earth give way. And in the summer heat, you might have the audacity to ask me, um, excuse me, sir, can I please stand in your shadow for shade? Now, I let that stuff slide, knowing that one day my cell phone will receive a transmission saying that you need help and will pay any type of commission for you need these muscles to help lift, move, or shift something. Now, I've learned to accept the fact that I remain a certain size despite the numerous hours I spend in excruciating exercise, but what some of y'all have yet to realize is that within this large size beats the heart, the circumference of Jupiter. Now, in past conversation with a dear friend of mine, we talk about the personalities of a big man. Oh, they're the sweetest people in the world, she says, but they're often clean, always seeking attention. Well, damn. And in all the moment, I remain speechless, so in response, I hope this poem will make some kind of sense. What you are looking at now is a specimen that used to be 389 pounds and 76 inches, so I hope we're all in agreement that you are in the presence of a big man. And in the Bible, it says we're all equal under God's love, but truthfully, what about the love of the people around you? So in response to my dear friend, big men seek attention because we don't receive it. The big man has become the object of wonder. Anywhere I go, I get asked these questions. Um, excuse me, sir, what team do you play with? Or excuse me, sir, are you some type of bouncer? And what club do you work at so I can get in for free? Even on the television screen, the big man has become the object of entertainment. But what makes matters worse is that we're sometimes lacked as target. Big men need love, too. And in this category, I guess we're purposely missed. Because when we try to approach the ladies, we're the quickest to get dismissed. Love has become the big man's addiction. For in this world, the cruelty is our escape from this harsh reality. And with every drop that so happens to miraculously find me, I cherish it with the greatest of appreciation because I know that love for a big man is in small supply. So when my dear friend said that big men are clean, I feel that we have to guard the right to be. Because love can appear and disappear so easily and then it's back to where we begun, alone. The big man is known for his intimidation, for his great feats of strength and protection. But what people find so funny is how a man so strong can have a soul of affection. How a mountain so big can have a river of compassion flowing from the depths of its heart, being the thirsty of the lonely down below. And from this altitude, the big man has a better attitude and the size of his heart gives him room enough to include each and every one of you. So please, if you find a big man trying hard to find love, please give that man a hug and let him know that big is most definitely beautiful. Thank you. It sure is. Yo, Hello, thank I'm at you. Yes. Everybody, please give for a tie black at this time. Thank you, baby. Thank Woo! you. Yeah. yeah. I love that piece. Yes, indeed. For real. Oh. Sexy. And thank you for sharing that. And, um, I'm glad that you were um you you put down your your Instagram handle on the um on the Zoom. With that said, if anyone else here would like to share their Instagram handles here in the group chat, please do so we can find you, help promote you, maybe contact you for other things down the road, because that's how things start here. Um, that said, thank you, Ty, for coming by. Um, we're gonna keep this shindig rolling. With that said, on deck we got Mr. Wits. But at this time, please, if, um, I just want to just check in real quick. Um, midnight, this is your first time, is that right? 
Yeah, I came through to support uh, Erica. Oh, all right. With that said, everybody, please welcome me now. Please join me in welcoming a big open minds, open heart, open arms. Welcome to midnight at this time. Take it away when you are ready. Welcome. Woo. Welcome, welcome. Woo. Woo. Uh, real quick, Brooklyn, New York, Jamaica, West Indies, but I live in Colorado now, but you know. Um, I'm going to do two haiku in a poem. My mother birthed me, died before I was age one. I have no nickname. Educated but filled with the white man's teachings, the master's degree. I want to thank you all for coming. Because the only thing that a poem wants is to be heard. But I dare you to listen. Pay more than a usual attention become the intervention that can help teach our adolescents. You see, some of our teenagers have gone astray. Internally, they feel a certain way. Confusion meets depression. I heard it's been said that absent fathers still teach vital lessons. And bullying gives you the personal view that you're less desirable, a powerless individual. Teens succumb to sex, drugs, and drink and give away to su su suicidal thinking. And that, that's just the beginning. Rap lyrics are winning. Clip and denying, got to get mine, replacing real dreams with the dreams of selling drugs. Being put in the street life at 13, not sure if you live to see the age of 14. And parents, some parents aren't even parenting because they too are still children. So I dare you to listen. To the boys that buy pants that don't fit so that they can fit in. To the children have the delusion that it's cute to wear high heels, tight jeans, and makeup. Little girls that envy adult women, underestimating the power of flirtation. In the meantime, you're grown men that want to fulfill these desires. When these desires become fertile, it gives birth to sin. But we can still teach our children, even when they're not listening, hoping one day they'll remember, instilling them self-esteem, morality, and life's realities. Teach them spirituality that can be passed on from generation to generation, as a generation. Again, I want to thank you all for coming because the only thing that a poem wants is to be heard. But I dare you, I dare you, I dare you to listen. That, that was great. Yeah. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Everybody, please give it up for midnight at this time. Thank you. Yes. Uh, welcome all. Appreciate the uh, with that. With that said, if uh, you had to post any of all links, uh, we could find you in uh, social media world so we could find you, help support you more. We would love to get in on that. Um, thank you for um, finding us and joining us here tonight. Um, that goes for everybody else here. That's, that's you know, this would not be possible without viewers and participants like you. And we at Open Minds, thank you. With that said, we're going to keep that rolling. On deck, we got Geechee Reeves. But stepping up to the plate now, please give it up for Mr. Wits. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Yes. Oh, blessing, blessing. Let's go. Before I even um do anything, I gotta give a big shout out to Brooklyn in the house. Erica, you killed it tonight. You was on fucking fire. Um, I just gotta let you know that you look gorgeous, you look phenomenal, and your performance was complimentary to your appearance. Um, are we doing one or two pieces, brother? I've been toppling back and forth. Look at dude too. Okay, I got you. Some relationships can be deadly. Ours had to be someone else's twisted joke. The way we fought like cats and dogs make God's laughter in my thoughts simplistically sinister. We must have been designed with each other in mind. Maybe her maker was different from mine, but something about her led me to know she had a hint of danger underneath her cloak. 
she had to have assassinated people for practice before she ever got to me. Must have been a landfill of confident warriors tallied up in her victories. I wouldn't take professional training off her table with the carnage she had an appetite for. She probably had her mom's must have taught her to take out tribes, draw straw size against a small army or more. But our beaten paths were a clash of titans, sword blade rolls with dead endings at each other's beginning. Her killer curves had nothing on her tongue and many have lost their head to ascending. I didn't see the attraction between us at first. She must have saw her, an opponent stance inside of me. I guess it was my roughness showing and her battle calling for a bad guy. You probably never seen two people kill each other the way we chose to over and over. They say the tongue can be sharp as a blade and some never well from inflicted wounds. Words can be decapitating in the mouth of a samurai, and she swung hers like my neck was the stump of a tree, one whose branches caved in her rooftop, and she was always on her back leg, ready to forward her attack. It already, I mean, it really didn't take much for me to draw blades. I guess my defenses were always up and we'd cut chunks out of each other just to see how well we'd heal, oftentimes exposing the heart through our fears. We fought to the death of our relationship. Our eyes refereed within our matches because there was no possible way to avoid our running into one another. And it was a sight to see. Some relationships can be deadly. Ours had to be binded by blood, a spiritual connection, one of the most highest twisted jokes. The way we fought to the death of us being together, home. I'm going to do this one. <laughs> Something I'm working on. So it's incomplete, but please give me some feedback. Oh, beautiful. Four spacious skies. Four amber waves of grain. Four purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. What a tale writ in history of this great nation, land of the free, home of the brave, the frontier where most migrants fled to be sanctioned from their higher army. This country, the continent of many faces, from the sands of beaches the high leaf trees to the snow covered Alps been labeled everything from Babylon to the new world, the Western front of the globe where the statue mounts in water, torch high and the book of golden deeds displayed by her hands. The representation founded on the principle of freedom, justice and equality the United States of America, the U.S. of a title we still fight for, us united. Only water and land should separate between us. The differences between our identities individualize us, but never should we segregate America, America. God shed his grace let warring butt itself out in the sacrifice of those who have. The soldiers who fought for more than men who battled filled with them. I pray these treaties, the hearts of those foreign and domestic, 
for those on the ground, the sea and the air, risking it all for their homeland, to all the lace boots a war prep, uniformed and utility belts, tactical backpacks and dog tag necks. Thank you for all the helmets you strap onto your chin. Army green, brown, black, and tan for the red, white, and blue. Awarded military combat medals, those who earned their stripes from the bronze medal to the purple hearted, the American soldiers prided in their colors, the way rainbows gratify the rain. This one's for every right brow, four fingers ever saluted, for all the walls climbed and obstacle course finished, for every busted knee or broken finger, for every bullet ever loaded into a rifle, every rashing ever palated for nutrition, everybody who thought their life was bigger than their own. So they risk living to save friends, family, and people they'll probably never meet. Hands they'll never shake. Voices they'll never receive a direct thank you from. Get your eyesight, eardrum, and arms reach. Never kept you from putting it all on the line from the EMS emergency and helicopter pilots to the sailors, jet fighters, and National Guardsmen who serve for us all. We thank you. We thank you. Everybody at this time, please give it up for Mr. Wits. Yeah, Wits. Yeah. Woo. Yes. Mr. Woods. I didn't expect you to have like a little like a <laughs> melodious intro to that to that poem there. That was different and I I dig that. I liked like how it was a little bit melodious but also kind of like kind of freestyle a little bit, you know. Um and then just delving into it, I I love that line there about like how the only thing should be dividing us is Land and water. I mean, and they don't call him Mr. West for nothing. <laughs> Thank oh, you, man. family. Thank you for sharing that new stuff with us. With that said, everybody, one more time, give it for Mr. Wits. Yeah, Mr. Wits. If you haven't Woo! already, check in with Mr. Wits um, on Instagram. Get in on. Um, who naked up in on here? his open mic, who naked up in here every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Um, like I said, check in with Mr. Wiz for more details on that. Uh, I'll be envying you because I never get a chance to be able to do this on Wednesday nights because they got me working. But do it. Tell them Dre sent you. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to keep this shindig rolling. Um, looks like I'm um, just double checking the uh, room. Double check my list. Yeah, Geechee did leave. And I did inform that Nemo soon was to be next. So with that said, on deck, closing the show would be myself. But it's coming up next at this time. Please give it up for Nemo soon. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Thank you, Dre. Um, and uh Erica, incredible set. Um, wow. So real honor to read with everybody tonight. I'm gonna read two short pieces. Um, I remember when smiling felt better than this. I'm in a negative zone outside the storm where everything gray has been replaced with something painted gray. My Psychiatrist spotted depression over my shoulder while I rattled off my daily data. I couldn't see her, but I imagine her dress was gray. He didn't say. But these little white pills should make her go away. 
I want to write a poem about my friend who died. But the words don't feel right in my mouth, so I have to spit them out and wait another day. I wish I could write him a song. Instead, I keep this vigil and watch her while she works her brush until the red is gone and the green is gone and the blue is gone and the air is heavy with her. I ache for the violence of the storm, but I would never tell my doctor that. So I listen for the sound of distant thunder while he's talking and watch the rain over his shoulder. And before I read the second one, I just want to say, being that it's All Souls Day, I think the soul that I miss so dearly is uh, the Magus. And I just want to take a moment to say how much uh, he meant to me and to all of us. So, um, I hope he's listening. I think he is. For sure, you know he's here, but So this second poem is dedicated to Mr. Witz, my food dog. I watched three birds flying above great stone eagles guarding a bridge and thought of you. How you've watched over me. Stone sentinels poised to catch the wind when the call comes. No one ever summons like those lost in time. Soldiers who drowned in mud, sailors whose bodies will never find dirt, mothers with nothing to bury but grief. We tell ourselves comfort stories, how they died fighting. But bombs bursting in bellies don't pair. They're just gone. Does the stone remember them? Will these lines? You taught me to honor the voices we carry. We poets observe flights and make verses of them. We defenders of meaning. Are these words worth the vigilance Brackish bits of beauty in the mind-numbing morass of the mechanism. Is this temple worth guarding? These formations fly to their fate while we wait. Fleeting wings searching for something that isn't going to last. While our watch lasts lifetimes. Thank you. As always, thank you, Nemo. Everybody, please give it up for Nemo Soon at this time. Yeah. Love you, bro. I fucking love you, man. Thank bro, you that for first that, line too, and that first piece. Like, good God, bro. I think you done, you know, broke everyone's head with that first. Can you can you just run back that first line on that on that first piece real quick? We need a rewind on that. You're, you're muted. Hold up. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I muted? <laughs> yeah, you're muted. You, you were. You were for a moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, I remember when smiling felt better than this is the first line. Oh, I remember when smiling yeah, felt that's, better than this. And that's depression right there. I mean, that yeah. that's depression. I Another line that really struck with me. I ache for the violence for the storm. But I'll never tell my doctor that. I fuck like... Bro. Of the storm, I should say. Um, you just, that was just, we have I, could, this, I felt that. For those of us who have a lifelong relationship with some of these doctors, some of these people, like our psychiatrists, there gets to be a push and pull. There gets to be a, a more interesting dynamic. <laughs> so it, it starts to show up in my poetry. Yeah. 
Yeah, I say that was a um, thing who is always great hearing you and you know, your message always takes us on a journey, man. Um I'm honored to to put a shout out, man. Thank you for sharing that piece tonight. Both pieces of fire. Thank you. Thank you as always, Nemo. One more time, give it for Nemo. So Yeah, the most Nemo. inspirational poet. All right. Oof. Before we get to our last poet, I just want to quickly say um, I want to thank all y'all again for making tonight what it has been. Uh, for Also for the ones here who was who were here earlier in the afternoon. Thank you for joining us for a double header today. It's been a little bit crazy here in open minds, but we are making things happen. And again, this around the world not... and back. Yo, what? It was, it was been one hell of a day, man. And this would not be possible without participants and viewers like you. So thank you again. Big shout out to Erica Floyd, our feature for tonight. Yeah. Um, and um, big ups to everyone else who performed. Now, with that said, closing out tonight's action is uh, your host for tonight's action, myself. Y'all, real quick, unmute yourselves and give all the love you got for tonight's host, Dre Reyes. Dre, Dre. Let's go. the host, the Let's host go. with the most. Yes, thank um, you. He continued to publicize this, and I I'm, I have never experienced that before. He was on it. Please give him his props for that. I, I appreciate you. Yeah. He deserves it. I just, I appreciate it. It was something I ever learned in college um, when it came to promoting events. Um, it's just persistence, getting it out there. And if uh, people come, they come, you know. And ultimately, it's all about who's here and not who's not here, you know? So with that said, all y'all are awesome. Thank you for creating and sharing the space. I got two pieces. I'm gonna start with something funny because I don't know, I like to get silly sometimes. Um, <clears throat> if anyone here is familiar with uh, this viral YouTube video, uh, Dracula Flow, it's fucking stupid, first of all. It's like ridiculous. And it has some there's some banger lines sprinkled in in, in that madness that this 70-something-year-old dude dressed up as Dracula is doing. But I decided to parody that shit. And because I hate mosquitoes so much, I wrote Exterminator Flow. And it's pretty much a parody of that. It's, it's like a weird owl thing, so deal with it. I'm moving different. I'm moving like Oppenheimer, blasting away at nature's heroin needles in the dead heat of summer, employing the Grim Reaper full time in the work of genocide by pesticides. I'm straight gassing a sweat to mist of death that doesn't miss. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. Mosquitoes, much like the syringes and needles littering the streets of mill cities that act as class struggle foliage that never gets raped, are a constant reminder that you can't fix a problem by ignoring it. West Nile, malaria, dengue, yellow fever, all of which can be prevented if we just kill them off. Maybe. Or maybe it was Mother Nature's way of combating the human infection that, was, that has devastated and scarred the planet we call home. Perhaps disease was her immune system simply doing its job, acting as antibodies from humankind, preventing death with death. How ironic. Initially, Mother Nature would fully intended to provide, and now she's decided to take the power back. Now imagine if you were a creating and providing force of nature, and you somehow decided it was a great idea to put mosquitoes in the mix. What drove you to such extremes? Now you're like Red Bull, giving disease some wings, disrupting everyone's circadian rhythm as you sit back and watch your troll game play itself out. Mother Nature must have amnesia. She forgot that I'm him. I'm him. I've been him. And I'll continue to be him. I'm the himulation. I'm him Kardashian. I'm him buck too. I got my DNA test back today. And turns out that I'm 100% Himalayan. Woo. I am the one they've been talking about. I am apocalypse incarnate for mosquitoes. 
again. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. Heed my warning. My extermination game is harder than James Harden's beard game. Falling so hard, you little bastards will think I'm a fucking nutsack. I'll kill you, you stupid pieces of shit. You reach for my neck, and I'll turn you into an example. You'll be high on 12 Jason Bournes when I spray you. I live for this shit. But you won't when I'm done with you. And that's peace. That's poll number one. Uh, hold on, and before now, you continue on to the second one, can we can we all revisit that yeah. hymn bit that he does with that Himalaya, the him yo like <laughs> come on now, you got the whole hemisphere yeah. covered with that. Like <laughs> that, was that, that was crazy. He, he did it on yeah. the surface of the mosquito. I always wondered about that. So thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mosquitoes right. suck. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, <laughs> my bad, dude. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just, I, I felt like that we needed to show you a little more respect and love for that man. Well, okay, so much appreciated. But this next piece here, um, I just want to give a quick shout out to um Rowan and Martin's Laughing. If any of y'all have not heard of this show, um. This existed in the late 60s. You could check it out on Amazon Prime or Shout Factory. Uh, it's really cool shit. Um, lots of influential tidbits. It pretty much laid the, found, like, the foundation for Saturday Night Live a decade later. Anyway, um, there's a little bit that they have called Socket to Me Time. And it got me, you know, it's, it, it was a nice little earworm. And then some recent events happened, some recent political events happened at uh, Madison Square Garden that I just felt like I needed to voice some shit out before it's too late. And this is our last Open Minds event before the election. So here's, it's sock it to me time, America. All right, America, it's sock it to me time. Sock it to me, 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 America. What is your moral compass? Where do you truly stand? Are you really going to allow Wish.com Hitler, that diabolical floater in Satan's shitter, another chance at the seat of the throne in his kingdom of lies and fake news? Meanwhile... Fox News spews hues of fascism, and all of a sudden, it seems trendy to be a fascist. Wow. It's hip to be a racist or a rapist. It's acceptable to have been convicted 34 or so more times and still be deemed viable for the presidency. Suck it to me, 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 America. Do you get off? at belittling minorities? Is it a guilty pleasure that you just cannot get rid of? Is it a kink that you just can't quit? I kink shame you, America. Me and the millions and millions who have had to experience life feeling considered less than white because we don't have the complexion for the protection and the collection. Fuck you recalling my homeland a floating island of garbage fuck you for cheering and laughing fuck you for thinking that throwing paper towels into a crowd of desperate people would solve any issue fuck you for thinking or for making help difficult to access after hurricane maria devastated a powerless island fuck you for everything you stand for Fuck you for constantly misleading so many people. Fuck you for ending so many friendships. And fuck you for the freeing of mental health of millions of Americans. So again, sock it to me. Sock it to me, 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 America. Will you enable this cancer to grow? Or are we going to perform chemotherapy at the polls? Poem. Everybody, da, 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 unmute da, da, da. yourselves and give it up for the host tonight, Dre Reyes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. 
And thank Ooh, you, Erica yeah, Floyd. Yeah, uh, your feature was amazing. Dre, you did an amazing job tonight. Um, we had an amazing hybrid event go on too. I know some of y'all in this room was there. It was just, today has been uh, one of my favorite days for poetry like straight up like today has been an amazing day for poetry and not only just for poetry but like global connection and unity and art and inspiration and just everything so i i want to thank all of y'all for uh being a part of that you know and helping that spread out so yeah thank y'all we love you much man one more Hello, time Thomas. give it up for drake and dre Thank you. you guys are amazing. We just believe in the importance of having spaces like this uh, because I feel that it is our duty to be the voices of the voiceless because this is what we do. We are the ones. We the ones right here. We doing every, it, man. We doing it in every in every in every show that we do, whether it be from Chaos Magic to Open Minds, to Come as You Are to the Slam Jam, and again, this would not and be possible without to viewers here. and participants like you, and to the Galaxy oh, yes. of Poets, and to you know all the shows going on. We just uh you know we love everything that that you guys are doing to uh, move this movement forward. To um. To um uh, piggyback on that um on that thought there, if there are any events that you would like us to promote, we try to promote things through the uh, the Slam Jam story on Instagram. So if you want a little spotlight, want some exposure, please hit me up, and I'll do my best to uh, accommodate you. Um, because promotion is definitely one thing that helps make this community uh, a thing. So with that said, um, check us out on Instagram at open minds open mic or at the one slam jam um you will be here in this zoom room tomorrow at 5 p.m eastern standard time for another edition of the slam jam and, who and for, for everybody here i was gonna get to that let me speak um for everybody here who hasn't who isn't aware of the slam jam it's a slam workshop where pretty much it same simulates the I got poetry slam experience, but instead of getting scores, you're given feedback. And tomorrow we have a special guest coach in the form of Steps, uh, a really dope up and comer in the Long Island area. And there will also will be an open mic afterwards. So for any participants who don't want to be in the slam workshop, there's there's something for everybody here in the Zoom room, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, again, Steps from Long Island would be our uh, special guest coach. And with that said. This concludes yet another awesome edition of Open Minds, Open Mic. And with that said, um, until next time, everybody, please keep writing and please keep loving. Peace and love to y'all and have a great night. Good night, y'all. Uh...